Kathy and Elliot Lewis on stage. <laughs> Kathy Lewis, Elliot Lewis, two of the most distinguished names in radio, appearing each week in their own theater, starring in a repertory of transcribed stories of their own and your choosing. Radio's foremost players in radio's foremost play. Ladies and gentlemen, Elliot Lewis. Good evening. May I present my wife, Kathy? Good evening. Listen to this. Does that make you want to take off to faraway places? Or this. That's going somewhere, too. Would you like to be aboard? Here's another one. That's more modern. That's for moon travel. Here's what starts it all tonight. That's what Sara Lee's mother heard. And that's what begins our story tonight. It was written for us by Morton Fine and David Friedkin, and it's called, Sara Lee, You Are Lovely as the Summer Night. Every spring, Mama said she was going to do it. She finally did. She ran away with the circus. It stopped over one night in Thurmont, and the next morning it was gone. Mama, too. It was something she'd wanted to do all her life. <laughs> Mama? <laughs> There she was with the circus and all, so I hitched a ride to Penmar. Now I always liked Penmar on the mountains like it was on the lake, so that lots of people came here for vacation. Especially I liked that place where you could stand and look out and see three states. Maryland, Pennsylvania, and another one I can't ever remember. I got a job at the Penn Star Hotel Chambermaiden. I fell in love, too, with Howard. He's a bum. Howard? A bum. Why do you say? I never saw a waiter who looked like he does and not be a bum. Now, come on, honey. Let's strip this bed. Mr. Abel wants this room ready half hour ago. Yes, ma'am. I know, Sarah Lee. I know about men like Howard. Yes, Miss Remsen. Yes, I've been in the hotel business. Yes, Miss Miss Remsen. The girl who was here before you. You know why she's not here anymore? Why? Howard. What'd he do? She got carried away, too. His white coat and black bow tie and the way he'd sweep through that door, soup overhead. She got carried away, too. Well, what'd he do? He let her on. Let her on so that the poor girl just withered like a pale rose needing water terrible. Well, if he's going to break my heart, that's the way it's going to be. If I got to wither like a pale rose, that's the way it has to be. Hmm. Guess you think you're in love with him. Yes, ma'am. And you don't have a chance. You see the way he's given the business to that girl who sits at the table six. And you see the way she's given the business right straight back. You don't have a... I do, too. Hmm. I'm making him supper tonight. Huh. Mr. Pascal's letting me use the kitchen I'm making Howard supper tonight. I'm going to serve it to him right in my own room. How do you like that, Mrs. Remsen? And he's going to break your heart. How do you like that, Sarah Lee? More corn pone, Howard? Sure. Spoon you some molasses? Sure. Hmm. Enjoying your supper, Howard? Sure. More coffee? Sure. Nice here, Howard, isn't it? Nice. On your feet all day, waiting on tables, nice to sit down here and relax and eat good food and be waited on yourself. Nice. Howard. Hmm? I love you. I love you, Howard. Sure. 
What you looking for, Howard? Can I get you something else? Sarah Lee. Yes, dear? You're pretty. Prettier than that girl who sits at table six, dear? Sure. Prettier than that girl who was here before me and whose heart you broke, dear? Sure. You're not going to break my heart, are you? No. I wouldn't care if you did. Sarah Lee. Yes, dear? Come here. Oh, Howard. Who is it? Valerie. Who? Table six. You in there, Howard? Bye, Sarah Lee. I am Maple Sugar. Mr. Pascal in the kitchen told me I might find you here. I am Maple Sugar. It's a nice night. The pavilion's packed. All those dances. Yes, ma'am. I must say you look pretty. Thank you. New dress? I traded with Mrs. Lee in 226 some babysitting for it. Sarah Lee. Yes, ma'am? You waiting for somebody out here? I might be, Mrs. Remsen. I thought you told me how it broke your heart. Yes, ma'am, it did. Then how come you're waiting for him? He broke my heart. That lets more love come in. Sarah Lee. Yes, ma'am. He say he meet you tonight? He hinted he would. Well, he won't. Now, let me tell you something, Mr. Remsen. I don't want you to do this anymore. I don't want you to come around and belittle him, Howard. I'm a woman in love, and a woman in love is like magic. I can tell things. I can feel things. You say Howard won't meet me tonight, but you're wrong. I know he's going to meet me and we're going to dance and he's going to say, Sarah Lee, I'm sorry. Sarah Lee, walk with me. Sarah Lee, I love you. I know it because of the magic that's in me. I just saw him get on the railroad train. The railroad train? The Baltimore and Ohio. He got on it? With the girl from table six. Where's the magic now, Sarah Lee? Woman in love. <laughs> what do you feel now? Who's going to meet you now, Sarah Lee? Who are you going to wait for now? Becca, Sarah Lee has worked for us at the Penn Star for three months. She's a good girl, a good cleaner, and very neat. She says she's going to Philadelphia to look for a job, so that's why I'm writing you. Maybe you can find a job there for her at the Franklin Arms. Say hello to Mr. Becker for me, Bessie Remsen. And Mr. Pascal, he packed me some turkey sandwiches for the train. Nobody saw me off. One fellow on the train wanted me to get off at Harrisburg. But I wanted to go to Philadelphia. The big city for me. Philadelphia. Oh, hello. Mrs. Becker said as long as I'm going to work here, I should bunk here with you. Oh, come on in, honey. Put your bag down. You can use that bed right over there. Get some things out of the linen closet. That's one thing about working here at Chambermaid. You can change your linen anytime you want. Miss Becker never says anything. Also, come six o'clock, the rest of the evening's yours. 
I don't know if you ever worked a two-shift hotel before, but come six o'clock, the evening's yours. Where are you from? Western Maryland. You got any folks? No, me neither. Oh, I don't mean my folks are dead. Mama ran away with the circus, and I don't know where she is. Oh. Well, I, I'm going to make up my bed. Where's the linen closet? Come on, I'll show you. I liked my work. I liked Mrs. Becker. I liked Muriel, the girl I roomed with. I began to think of Howard only in the afternoon because I was so busy in the afternoon. Then one day, a funny thing happened. I was emptying the waste paper basket of room 411, and there was Howard. He looked just like him. There he was with his picture in the magazine, not on the cover, but on the middle page someplace open the way it was, the way someone threw it in a basket. It sure looked like Howard. Oh, it wasn't him. The magazine said his name was Trevor West, and he was on the stage. But he sure looked like Howard. Enough like him so that I cut out the picture and put it above my bed. Who's that? Fella, I know. Fella, you know? That picture's been cut out of the uh-huh. mat? Huh. Mm, good looking. Uh-huh. Know him good? Uh-huh. Real good? Uh Uh-huh. What does he do? Uh, what does he do? He's on the stage. Oh. I didn't mean to lie. It's just that he looked so much like Howard. Honestly, it could have been the same fellow. The way their heads were shaped in the mouth and the expression in the eyes. If he squinted, you just couldn't tell any difference at all. What happened then, I can't explain at all. Being in love with Howard and always looking at the picture, I fell in love with the fellow in the picture. My. And then we'd walk out to a place where you could see three states. Maryland, Pennsylvania, and... uh, uh, You and Trevor, huh? Trevor and me. Hmm. Oh, he loved me. He loved me so much I had to run away from him so he wouldn't be sitting in front of my door so much so he could be on the stage. Tell me about the lake. Ah, well, we'd go out on Lake Mead together when it was moonlight, nothing around except the crickets on shore and the music from the pavilion across the lake. Oh, I get goose pimples. You want to hear some more? Not now. But you ought to hear about the time we hiked together and Trevor killed a copperhead. Copperhead? Oh. You want to hear me tell it? Not now. Sorry. What are you so excited about? Let me look at him. Huh? Get your head out of the way. Let me look at his picture again. Trevor. Trevor. You walked with this boy, canoed with him, danced with him like I've been telling you these last two months. Oh, my. What's the matter with you, Muriel? He's caught up with you. What? He's even got a room on the third floor, your floor. Who? Trevor. Trevor? Trevor. How do you know? I saw him coming down the hall. I saw him. And I asked the bellboy what his name was, and he said Trevor West. Move your head, honey, so I can see his picture again. Oh, my, I'm going over and lie down, honey. You mind if I think about him? Mama? <laughs> Listen to me, Mama. Don't let him break my heart again, Mama. You are listening to Kathy and Elliot Lewis on stage. Tonight's play, Sara Lee, You Are Lovely as the Summer Night. This Saturday daytime, the Peter Lind Hayes Show returns to CBS Radio. 
Peter brings back with him, of course, his attractive and talented wife, Mary Healy. You'll be entertained, too, by the Norman Laden Orchestra with Teddy Wilson at the piano. It's the Peter Lind Hayes Saturday Daytime Show, back starting day after tomorrow on most of these stations. Listen for it. It's fun. <laughs> I would like to describe Trevor West. I once bumped into a fellow, Pan Mar, who looked just like him. They both were good looking in a fast, dark way, and they had wavy hair, and if a girl got close enough to see, he seemed to smile, a secret smile. I got close enough. I was making up the room when he walked in. He was wearing a silk handkerchief around his neck and neat gray flannels. His coat hung over his shoulders like a cape. He walked in, and he came right over to me and put his finger under my chin and lifted my face close to his. You don't know how good you've got it. Sir? Steady job, three squares a day, a time to work and a time to play and a time to love. And no understudy. No conniving. Huh? The theater, darling. Darling, I have to... I'm sorry, but I've got to No, straighten. no, you don't. You don't have to do anything, you understand. Nothing. A girl like you. Yes? Well, what kind of girl are you? I've got to make up your room, Mr. West. Mr. West? How did you know my name? I saw your picture once in a magazine and... And What? Please get out of the way. I've got You to saw know. my picture once in a magazine, and what? Miss Becker, fire me. Did you cut out the picture? Yes, sir. Why? Here's your towel, sir. You'll have to hang them up yourself. And here's your soap. Catch. Thanks. Say. Yes, sir. What's your name? Sarah Lee. Mr. West? Yes. You can have another one. Catch. Tell me, tell me, tell me. It's amazing. What is? There was a fellow I knew once, Harry or Harold or something. Voice sounds just like Trevor's. Looked a little like him, too. Tell me what Trevor said when he saw you. Well, you know. What? He wants to marry me. Oh, my. He quit his job and he searched and searched, and now that he's found me, he wants to marry me. Oh, my. <laughs> Yes, sir. How long has it been? A week. That's right. I've brought you something. Huh? A ticket to tonight's performance of my play. I feel that a week's worth of chats that we have every morning while you clean up my room, well, I want to show my appreciation. Oh, thank you. And a speech goes with it. Sara Lee, you are like cool drops of water on a thirsty man's lips. Oh. You are lovely as the summer night. Oh. Cooling as the breeze on a fevered cheek. Oh. Who are you, Sara Lee? I'm from Thurmont. No, that's not what I mean. What tribe of gypsies, of shy pagans, are you from? This is against the rules, Mr. West. <laughs> Mrs. Becker is very strict about certain things. Let me look at you. No, no. I'll see you tonight. I didn't look when you were kissing that girl on the stage. Mm -hmm. You were wonderful. Thanks. Trevor? Mm hmm. What you said, what you told me, did you mean it? Mean what? I was lovely. As the summer night. 
necessarily. Yes, dear. Let's sit down. All right. Oh, my. Isn't this beautiful? Darkness all around, and yet we know over there trees and flowers. I want to tell you something. Yes, dear? I'm lost, and I'm lonely. What? I'm lost, and I'm lonely. You? My heart's a rover, and my dreams wander the paths of the world, and I'm lost, lonely. Oh, Trevor. It seems I search the faces in whatever crowd, seeking, is this the one I say? Well, that one, is that the face? Is she the end to my drifting? What are you trying to say? Oh, Sarah Lee. Yes, dear. So lost. So lonely. I'm here, Trevor. I'm close to you. Don't be lonely. Don't be. Sara Lee. Sara Lee. Mama. <laughs> he loves me. most romantic thing I ever heard. Murder, you don't know the half of it. He said that to you? Yes, yes, he did. Oh, my boyfriend hardly says a word. I like a man who talks. I call my boyfriend Smiley. He's always smiling. Trevor smiles. Sad smiles like he's lost and lonely. Oh, my boyfriend knows where he is every second. Trevor kissed me, and it's a bird hurt against my lips. Well, when my boyfriend kisses me, he... Oh, I'll get that. Yeah. Yes, she is. Sure, I'll tell her. Well, I, I really wouldn't know, Miss Becker. Bye. Was Miss Becker? Oh? She wants to know why Mr. West wants to see you right away. He wants to see me? Right away. I had a feeling he wanted to see me. A woman in love is like magic. I can tell things. Come in. Hello, Sarah Lee. Oh, Trevor. Hold me, hold me. I can't. I've got to close this suitcase. Suitcase? I just phoned downstairs for the boy. He'll be right up. You're leaving? Yes, I am. But I'm not packed or anything. You're not packed? You said you were going to take me to Samarkand, to Thebes, to mystic places beyond the beyond, you said. You were there last night, honey. Oh. Places we all dream about, but we never get to. You mean, never get too alone? That's right. Only in someone's arms. Then you're going away. Yes, but... There can't be any but... But I've got a picture of myself, and I've written a little something on it. What? To Sara Lee. Thanks for Samarkand and Thebes, Trevor. Oh. And it's in a frame. Leather. My show's closing. I've got to leave. What can I say to you? Just goodbye. Goodbye, Trevor. <laughs> Mrs. Becker gave me a recommendation back to Mrs. Remsen. And the cook packed me lunch for the train. Muriel couldn't see me off because she had to take my floor till I got a new girl. On the train, a fellow wanted me to get off at Baltimore. But I'd heard about Baltimore. So I got back to Penmar. I gave Mrs. Remsen a letter and she gave me my old job back. 
I didn't know how long it was going to last because the season was almost over. As a matter of fact, it was a Sunday before Labor Day that there was a knock on my door. Oh. Hello, Sarah Lee. Come in, Howard. For a minute, I thought it was... Who? It doesn't matter. Who? A man I knew in Philadelphia. Well, Howard, it's nice to see you again. What have you been doing? Nothing. How is it that you're back here in Penmar? I heard you went away with the girl at table six. It was table six, wasn't it? Where'd you go? Baltimore? Yeah. What happened in Baltimore, Howard? Oh. She leave you? She just wanted somebody to ride with. She didn't even let me get off the train. I rode all the way to Richmond. Wow. Sara Lee. Yes, Howard? I've missed you. You have? Oh, yes. Honest? Honest. Oh, I've missed you. Oh, Howard. Sara Lee? Yes? I love you. Do you, dear? Yes, yes. Oh, my darling. Sara Lee? What? You're lovely. What? You're lovely. Yes. As the summer night? Hmm? Am I as lovely as the summer night? Sure. Then say it. Tell me I am. Sara Lee, you're lovely as the summer night. Darling. Darling. Go away, Mama. 